Okay, so I think I have a theory about why I've been having problems with these Studio Series figures. Maybe, just maybe, Hasbro and Takara's designers are so sick of doing those designs that these were just hammered out without any real testing and just thrown out there for sale. Maybe they're just so sick of bumblebees. Just get it off my table. Look, there's a bumble. Just go. Get, get away from me. No more yellow for a year. Maybe. I don't know. So maybe the problem here is we need a new character, someone who hasn't had a new toy or a new mold of their own. So we are going to take a look at Stinger from Age of Extinction and his brand new Studio Series figure. First thing to note, he's an actual Pagani. He's not a Bumblebee repaint. Praise be to Primus. Looking very good. The sculpt is actually fairly nice, re recreating the details of the actual real-world vehicle quite well. Uh, you will note one thing. Um, see, I have this rear-view mirror, but I, I don't have this rear-view mirror. Um, did I mention in the other reviews that quality control on these is not very good? Yeah, that came that way. But we're going to ignore that because that's an honest mistake and just look at everything else. He's done up in a very bright shade of red, very glossy, very nice looking. Tons of gunmetal. This is all paint going all throughout the toy and done up very nicely. Looks very sharp, very wicked. Black across the front for the grill. Little detailed bits of silver there for the lights. Nicely molded as well. The racing stripe down at the bottom done in silver. And then the black around the trim and the rear. Tons of black paint just making all that detail pop and stand out. It looks so nice. This is the one time where I'm not going to give them havoc for having black rims. Because that's how he actually looked in the movie. That does make the little square, that means we need makes the little uh, peg of red holding it onto the toy a little bit conspicuous, but other than that, yeah, he's fine. And yeah, there's a Decepticon sigil right there on the hood. <laughs> a little obvious for a disguised character, but hey, whatever. Technically, never a Decepticon if you really think about it. But yeah, he looks quite nice. Sculpting, detailing, paint looks quite good. Nice job on Stinger. You finally got the toy you deserved, and you're not just a rehashed Camaro. Bravo. Now, you'll notice these little bits hanging out on the bottom. That is his weapons, which store on a whole bunch of pegs on the underside. I will admit, I might be getting this wrong. Um, these are a little bit... Uh, these are, there's a little bit shallow, so I was trying to find spots where I could store all four of his shuriken weapons. I couldn't really find anything that didn't just cause him to scrape when you rolled them around on a desk or something. So, not enough clearance to stack them all up on the discs and or on, on these little uh, these little arms underneath. But it does work if you just strew them about so they don't get lost. Yeah, it just makes it look weird on the underside. I got blades sticking out the side of my car. It's really annoying when I'm trying to get in. I've lost six ankles already. Okay, so that's the vehicle. Vehicle's fine. Vehicle's fine. Let's get him to robot mode. And this is where things get interesting. Let's see if I even remember how to transform him because it's been a few weeks now. I admit, I'm not getting these videos out very quickly. All right, so the whole canopy section has to come up and then rotate over like so. Rotate like that. We can get that out of the way. And then go over here and do the other arm like so. I'm going to try and go slowly just to make sure I get this correct because it has been a little while since I've done this. I'm going to unclip things up here. Get that out of the way so we can start raising details up. Uh, the head is on a big panel. It's going to flip up there. That gives us room to move the arms like so. We can get them out of the way for now. We'll do some final adjusting once we get him looking more like a robot. Beyond that, we've got to get the legs worked out here. They don't really peg in there. We have to go to the rear section where we can unclip them from the black piece there in the middle. Like so. Now that done, the legs rotate outward like that. And then car panels flip down as so. Uh, if you didn't catch it because it kind of happened weird, uh, this is going to have to be flipped up. It starts like that. Flip it up like that so we can fit him into the chest. Feet seeds out. Alright, so that done out of the way. Get, get all of this spinal stuff out of the way. We'll deal with that here in a minute. Alright, so 
all this section is going to rotate around on the translucent plastic that is the windshield. And yeah, this is one of those little stress-filled connection points that has me worried for the toy's future. Seems okay for now. It doesn't seem to handle too much strain. Clips in here, the back, rather. So these two parts don't physically connect. They just fit flush together. Make sure that's properly aligned. All right, so... The head itself is on this panel still, so I'm going to rotate that around. And once we get all of this aligned, we can fold that down, put the head in the correct position. Arms go down. We'll adjust, get them pointed toward the front. This big shell goes like that. The shoulders, I've never been quite sure what to do with. There's a lot of extra hinges here, so they're supposed to go in the certain directions and angles. I've never really found one that uh, really seemed like it fit. You know, it just felt like junk. It felt like kibble. So I kind of tend to fold it down like this. So at least it points forward and looks like an actual detail. I don't know. It looks like you're actually utilizing it. Luckily, you know, not a whole lot of necessity to stick to how the instructions tell you. So that is what we're going to call robot mode for now. And we will adjust as necessary. He's got quite the transformation going on for one of these guys. There's a lot of involvement with how he transforms one another. I'm happy that even though he is in the movie supposed to just be, you know, like an upgraded Bumblebee or inspired by Bumblebee, his transformation is very distinct from anything uh, Michael Bay's favorite yellow vehicle has ever done. So that's a really important detail. Very, very good for the makers of the toy. The head itself, looking... Exactly how you would expect Stinger to look. He has this bright green, almost like Venom or Carnage style eyes going on. Very, very weirdly shaped, very cruel and mean looking. Which, hey, he's a Decepticon. I guess that's appropriate. But anyway, it's done in a nice level of detail. Everything's sculpted and painted quite well. I dig it. He looks good. So, let's talk about the toy itself. Clearly a very vast visual difference from the two modes. I love how the transformation gets rid of two of his wheels completely by burying them in the chest. And I love how it gets rid of the windshield by burying it in the midsection. That actually cleans him up quite nicely and keeps a lot of vehicle parts that are otherwise just hanging off the back as big panel chunks uh, out of the way and actually makes him look... A lot cleaner it's some really clever engineering on top of just being interesting to transform I will say there is this elephant in the room you can't really do anything with that it's just stuck on there you can imagine it as some kind of weapon if he's got some kind of Megatron esque arm cannon thing going on I, I don't know uh, it's not accurate to the movie certainly it's just a, it's just a really unfortunate spot that they had to leave the kibble on due to transformation so you give and you take oh well detailing at least is nice he's got tons of black going on now breaks up the red nicely uh he's got a lot of detail that we can recognize from the movie like very sleek spots on the legs uh transformation does leave a few things a little bit crudely done like these big vehicle sections just hang out the back of his legs that's a little crude that's a little uh I don't know, not quite up to some of the standards. Like, one thing that does impress me about these toys in this in this series so far is the engineering level, because they do come up with some interesting ways of dealing with components and putting away parts. This, this does suffer from a little bit of where do we put it, but it's not egregious. Okay, that is egregious, but it's not terrible, and... We at least make up for it in other ways. Like I said, he does look nice. Let me go to the articulation, and then we'll show off what the accessories do. So the head is ball-jointed. He can look all the way around, up, down, plenty of motion there. So that all works out very well. Shoulders are full ball joints, so you've got plenty of range and motion there. Plenty. Elbow rotates around at the bicep and then has a 90-degree bend to it. Nothing at the wrist. The waist does not exist. Ball joints here in the thighs, plenty of range, no obstruction whatsoever. Works, feels nice. 90 degree at the knee. A little bit of give here in the foot. It goes back, it goes forward, and that's pretty much it. But for the most part, decent articulation for this guy. You know, what you would expect out of a deluxe. Nothing, nothing too amazing, but 
he gets the job done. He can pose the way I would hope he could pose. Just nothing that goes above and beyond. So, let's talk those shurikens. Well, he's got this big thing in the back, which is another big piece of just kibble fluff hanging off. All right, so we can we can rotate and fold this thing in a whole bunch of fashions behind his back, and they have the pegs for all of these blades that can store onto him. So you've got plenty of adjustment for how these are supposed to look. I'm trying to do this quickly because, uh, well, there's really no way to do this quickly. You need to do it one by one. I only have two hands. I don't know why you expect more of me. I'm sorry for having so many limbs. But yeah, you see in some movie shots and some promo shots, he does have this big backpack thing of blades. and It's nice that you can recreate that. It's a little cumbersome, and it does complicate his design a little bit to incorporate it, but hey... It's it's at least a neat it's at least a neat thing you can do with the blades because other than that uh, they aren't really that effective as normal accessories you can fit them on his forearm and it looks like a buzzsaw weapon but uh, there's no real way to put them in his hands his hands are that same five millimeter post you always get and he doesn't really have any pegins for that the way Bumblebee's uh, shurikens did in the last toy line but you know it is at least well oh, and there one goes flying is at least something movie accurate that you can do. It's at least a display option, so you're not going to lose any of the discs. That's an important part. Oh, also, I guess I should mention, like all the other movie studio figures, he does come with a backdrop made from the cardboard insert to his box. Uh, here's a photo of it, because I don't have it at the ready, and it's pretty much just a box with some fancy printing that matches Stinger's scene in the movie. It's not impressive to me. It feels just like a little bit of guff thrown in. But that is everything you get out of Studio Series Stinger. I do find him to be a step up from Bumblebee and Ratchet. Aside from a missing uh, rear view mirror on mine, the quality control's nice. All the joints feel good. Nothing was flying off, you know, unless it was kind of designed to fly off. Uh, yeah, all the parts held up and everything was nice and firm. Like, I, that's that's what I expect out of a good action figure. He still runs expensive, like I'm still not over this $20 price point thing, but in this case, since it is a character that was not previously available as his own mold, not really available as an actual Transformer in the US at all, and since he does have a lot going for him, I, in this case I leave it to you to decide if a $20 price point is worth it for the figure or not. I find other figures for lower cost to be more fun to play with. But that's just me and being a little bit tired of the movie's designs. So this one is up to you. He does, at the very least, have the most going on so far.